So today is April 18th, 2016. It's about 7.05 and I'll call to order this meeting of the Brattleboro Dev Development Review Board. Um, the first item of business, I suppose, I don't know if everybody's aware of this, but one of the applicants advised us today that due to a family health issue, they want a continuance. Uh, that's 2016-25 Marble Dealership Realty. So the agenda we had printed up here is not quite right and we should move to continue that before we go further. Okay. Second. Second. Okay, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? James, to clarify, it's moved, it's um, continued to May 16th. Oh, okay. Do you accept that friendly amendment yes. to your motion? I do. Okay. Um, so, I don't know if you have been to GRB meetings before, but I give some opening remarks about what our meeting is and how it works. Um, at the DRB, we hear applications for land development in the town of Brattleboro and appeal of zoning administrator decisions. Procedurally, the Development Review Board operates on the record. Broadly, this means that we take a clear record of testimony from the applicant and any interested parties and then issue a written decision with our findings. Applicants and members of the public should be aware that as we are on the record, this is your only opportunity to comment on and provide evidence relating to an application. In the event our decision is appealed to the environmental court, the court will not take or consider additional testimony at its hearing, but will look at the evidence from our hearing, the regulations or applicable law, and determine if the evidence from our hearing supports the findings and decisions by this board. Only interested persons that participate in this proceeding may appeal a decision made by this board, so I strongly encourage you all to speak up at the hearing. As we're on the record, we're going to ask that if you believe that you might even possibly speak, and especially if you're an applicant, you um, take an oath to tell the truth. So if you wouldn't mind standing up and raising your right hand. Um, do, you hereby affirm, do you hereby swear or affirm that the testimony you're about to give them the cause under consideration will be the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth under the pains and penalties of perjury? I think we did. Okay. Um, so now what you're saying on the record can be considered by us and in any appeals. Applicants require a majority vote of the full board to succeed. That is four votes out of seven. As you can see, we only have six people tonight. I'm hoping that that changes, but you still need four votes for an application to pass. When we don't have our full board, if you wish to have your application heard by a full board, you may move to continue, and we generally grant those unless a application has been sitting around for a really long time and we think it's, you know, some, it's not really based on our board size. Um, after taking testimony, the board will close the public hearing and may vote on your application. The board will issue a written decision within 45 days of the close of the hearing. While we may vote on an application in our meeting, it is the written decision that controls the timeline for appeal. It should be noted that the town of Brattleboro is a party with an interest in land development applications. The town does, <coughs> excuse me, the town does not have special status before this board. Documents provided to the board by the town planning department, the town attorney, or anyone else who is a town employee or works for a town department will be considered in exactly the same way as information from an applicant or any other interested parties. So our first order of business um, is reviewing and approving the minutes of our previous meeting. So moved. Second. Okay. Uh, any discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Motion passes six to nothing. Um, Mr. Bannon, has this meeting been properly warned? Yes, it has. Thank you. Um, if we could please go through and disclose any conflicts of interest or ex parte communications any of you may have had with respect to any of these applications. Nobody? Okay, um, because we are with less than seven tonight, Mr. Whittle, you are appointed to all applications. He's our only alternate, right? 
Um, the first application is 2015-220 by Delta Epsilon Incorporated. Now, one of you folks from Delta Epsilon? It could be, depending on what kind of this. Yeah. Oh, okay. Um, have you done this before? Yeah. Okay, so if you could come up to the table and please tell us about your project. So, this is... Uh, and, and if you could just say who you are so that oh, yeah. the people at home yep. know what's going on. Yeah, my name is uh, Robin Johnson, and I'm here in regards to the renovations of the Stone Church, and specifically the uh, exterior changes um, based on past meetings with the D Design Review Committee. Okay. Um, and you guys hope to build a ADA accessible entrance there? Uh, yes. Um, that, where it falls on our construction timeline is not determined because talking to fire safety, uh, they say that we may not be required to build it, but we still want to prep for it and have uh, the plans to build it in case uh, we need to and also because we'll, it helps our uh, ability to receive grant money and, uh, and certain things by we uh, we already have we've c completed uh, two ADA bathrooms and so this the ramp is the next step uh, and so we're looking to make sure the design is approved so when we do it it'll be easy did you receive the letter that's dated today with the number from of notes from the um, DRC yes. letter yes yeah is there anything that you'd like to comment on that they raised in their letter? Uh, Do you want a copy of it in front no, of you? Um, no, I, I mean, I, I remember it, yeah. Okay. I, was, I had no problems. And e either you or the applicant will arrange to uh, execute all of the things that they suggest? Yes. Okay. Um, I, I do have uh, one question here from regarding occupancy. Um, I don't we'll know. try to answer it. Okay. Sometimes when I don't expect it, I have to ask Brian right. to answer it. But yeah. someone in here is probably going to answer it. Um, so by the nature of the, pro the project, there'll be ongoing uh, work in the basement, but we hope to open up for occupancy as soon as uh, we're completed in the upstairs. Um, and so I just wanted to check whether that's a problem and exactly who I talk to. Is that fire safety? Do I, is it Brian who does that or is it someone else? I know that we don't do occupancy and I bet Brian knows the answer yeah. to this. Sure. So there are two. There's a certificate of occupancy which you'll get from the Division of Fire Safety for right. the building permit. Then we do certificates of compliance mm -hmm. um, and it's supposed to be before the new use has started but in this case seeing it's an ongoing use. Right. It's really when you finish the site plan elements that that will be issued. So we Resuming use of upstairs is unconditional on getting your certificate of compliance. Okay, all right. I think that was my only question. Okay. Um, now, you're not going to change the fact that there's no on site vehicle circulation, right? Uh, on site vehicle circulation? There won't be. No, no, yeah. That, that's not going to change, yeah. is what I'm asking. No, okay. no change, yeah. yeah. Um, you know, you'll continue to rely on public parking for people who use it? Yes. Yeah. Right. Is there a handicapped spot on Grove? Uh, near there? there isn't, but at the DRC meeting, they uh, suggested that if the ramp is built, we may have to ask the town to designate one of the existing spots to be handicapped access. There's not one. Yeah. How does the federal court not have a handicapped accessible space? That's the one in the post office? I think there might be one I on think Main there's Street, one in the but post not office on Grove. Lot. Yeah, there is. No. Yeah, there's one in the post office. Okay. Lot. Right, yeah, but there's also uh, a handicap access, uh, as far as I recall, because I used to do the Dove program for the Vermont um, AIDS project to get into the other side door. There, there is a, a ramp no. there. Mm -hmm. So, you know, and that's right next to you. Yeah, yeah. right. Yeah, as oh. far as I know, none of the spots are on Grove or designated as such. Right. Are, are there going to be changes made to the exterior lights? Uh, the uh, only possible change was if we have lighting for the sign, which would certainly um, 
not be in excess of 2,000 lumens. It would, and okay. we wouldn't run any power, so at most it would be uh, small solar lighting. This would be on a sign structure, not on the building? On the sign structure, nothing, okay. nothing new on the building. Okay. Um, Will you have lighting on the ramp? Um, I don't, only, only if we're required, because that area is very well lit with, from the street. And we'll, he'll come back with the sign, right? Yep. <clears throat> That's all the questions I have. Does anybody else have uh, on the board have questions for the applicants? Applicant, excuse me. It's okay. <laughs> the use of the downstairs is going to remain the same. Uh, Matt, uh, no, no, no. The use from the downstairs, we've. Um, We've, we've scrapped the public use aspect of the downstairs. It was uh, too expensive for a number of reasons. We would have to uh, first build the extra entry, and then uh, in order to, to have the laundromat, we would have to uh, increase the gas capacity, in, which would mean we'd have to bury a large tank, and we couldn't bury it in the back because it's too close to the uh, neighboring building. And we would also have to get a new water line to support it. Oh, so wow. all the costs were just too much. So we we decided to, and that was also going to shift cost, shift money that was going into the main hall, which is a really you know nice part of the building, into the basement. So now the uh, the basement will only be uh, back of the house use. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, we'll um, we are looking to put a kitchen in there. So that'll be the one thing that's that has changed. That's actually kind of extensive. The rest of it will uh, remain basically the same. So you have the accessible bathrooms down there, and are you going to put an elevator with? Uh, we will have we'll have an accessible bathroom down there, just because any new bathroom has to be accessible. Mm -hmm. But we won't uh, we won't have access to the basement because it won't be public space. So, we'll so where will the ramp go? The ramp will be on the side, the, right. the south side um, on Grove Street. Mm -hmm. So it'll switch back in front of the large wind, southern window and go to the side door. Uh, talking to the DRC, they are very concerned about the, the front facade of the building. So originally we planned the ramp to be in the front facade, but they weren't very comfortable with that. So we adjusted to put it to the side entrance. So they'll just go upstairs to the main hall? Um, well, the public will go up main, the, the stairs, but the ramp will be um, to the side entrance. And it will, so uh, if you go up the ramp, you go into the main hall? Yes. From the side entrance? Mm -hmm. Yeah. But there's no accessible bathroom up there? No, 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 there's now two, okay, two accessible now two. bathrooms. One up, up one down. One up, one down. Or no, there's two on the main hall. Oh, no, sorry. Okay. Yeah, sorry. Yeah. Okay. I should let you answer. <laughs> no, that's fine. <laughs> um, are there any other questions from the board? I was just curious about, there's something here about, you want to put in picnic tables or something? Where would they be? Um, on would, Grove? Yes, on the Grove side as well. Oh, uh, okay. Towards, towards Main Street where you get past the, the main shed roof. So it won't get... So they're going to be kind of like an outdoor cafe kind of setup, or uh, it's going to be. A I mean, currently there's a, a picnic table there that's a complete health hazard because yeah. <laughs> it's rotted, and so we want to put something, uh, a stone table and benches. Oh, okay. uh, not not for cafe reason, just for sitting because it's a nice place to sit. Oh, great. okay. And that big bush is going to go. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Any other comments or questions from the board? Just real quick, that ramp now is going to be a straight ramp? No, it's, it'll switch back. So it's going to go, we have to get about um, uh, four, close to 48 inches uh, of elevation. So we'll enter from the driveway between the church and the old lawyer's building, the parish house. Okay. And it'll go out towards Main till you get to the end of the window. Uh, which is about, I think it's about almost 30 feet. Um, it's about 24 because we need a, a five-foot <coughs> flat at the end of that. And then it will come back 
along the building, uh, approximately another 20 feet. And then at that point, we'll hit a platform. We'll put a platform outside of that side and then slide the existing stairs or stair profile out about 30 inches. So there'll also be a three foot stairwell on the side. So if people need to exit or enter, they can walk up as well. Any other questions from the board? We're going to reopen the quarry on the back side of Wantasticat for any of this, or no, no, we have all the stone we need. <laughs> um, are there any questions or comments from our member of the public on this application? <laughs> I, do. I have to ask. Um, okay, uh, having that in mind, is the board ready to have a motion? Uh, yeah. So. Uh, I don't think there were any conditions, Brian. Did I miss any? Except that the applicant followed the directions described in the April 18th letter from the... Uh, Planning Department. Well, I guess it's from Sue Fillion, but summarizing yeah. the, summarizing the uh, recommendations of the DR... It's not the DRB. DRC. 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 Yeah. DRC. And those conditions are incorporated into the draft right. that was circulated. Okay. okay. So the, I need a so moved for what I just said. Though. So moved. So moved so move what you just said. <laughs> All right. And we got a second? Second. Okay. Um, any further discussion? No. Nope. Hearing none, all those in favor of approving application 2015 220? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay. It passes 6 0. Thank, Thank you. Have a nice night. You too. The next application is 2016-33 U.S. Bank National Association. And that's you, right? Oh, good. Have you done this before? I have. Okay. Could you just identify yourself and tell us a little bit about your project, please? Okay, my name is Susan Belleville, I'm owner and broker of Belleville Realty. Um, this is actually a catch-up for a property that was foreclosed on. And we picked up the listing as the brokers for the uh, bank that owns the property and discovered uh, that there is a title defect and that they didn't get a permit for an addition they put on. And we're looking to have a permit issue for the addition. I should have asked this a while ago, but my firm's not involved in this, are we? No, okay. I don't believe so. I could give you names of people that are involved just to make sure, but could I you, don't. Do you mind? I don't mind. So who, who are the parties to the foreclosure action? Uh, Frost, Eugene, and Monique. Okay. So, um, what's the current status of the project, Ms. Pelvin? Uh The property is listed for sale. We have a buyer that wants to purchase the property, um, but uh, they're unwilling to do that, and the bank won't release it with its current defect. I, I meant really more with respect to the construction. It looks oh. like it was sort um, of half or partially complete. It's. Mostly finished inside. Um, there's some cosmetic work that needs to be done. It's the exterior, the siding that needs to be completed. It's Tyvekt. Yeah. It looks like the roof has the... Um, oh, yeah. There's, the um, there's asphalt um, paper on the Bitch roof. a thing? I, yeah. I would, that's what I didn't want to say on the record. Well, that's... <laughs> Actually, I I'm not swearing. It's more like tar paper. <laughs> oh, okay. It's not as good as bitch a thing. Oh. <laughs> I, always, I always thought that was just colloquial. That was a trade name for it. Um, oh, can you tell me who the buyer is, just since we're going through this? Um, he owns several properties in town. 
Kentucky multifamilies. And I'm drawing a total blank on his name. Do you know? No. Okay. He owns the two unit on Thomas Street. He just bought a house on Green Street. Grenfie. Oh. Yes. Yeah. Mark Reffy. His okay. daughter actually is buying it. Okay. Um, do you have any knowledge of whether there's a plan in place to complete the construction? Yes, I believe the uh, people that have the contract on it are looking to complete and do some upgrades around that. This is Mr. Rappi you're talking right. about. Yeah. Well, um, technically, it's his daughter. I apologize. Oh, that's okay. Um, do you know if they have in mind how long it's going to take them? Um, their dream is to have it finished within a few weeks after they close on it, so it's can't close till after the um, approvals issued and then the um, appeal period. I mean, our, our only concern here is that it get finished. The, the, um, the, they're going to finish it. And the, uh, the suggestion in the draft of our proposed order, which doesn't control what we do, right. was that it includes something saying this needs to get finished within a year. That's more than... Adequate. You that think that'll be, be satisfactory? Yeah. Okay. Um, and the house is similar in size to the other ones in the district, right? Yes. And also, it is uh, set back similarly. Yeah, it sits up on a knoll. Um, it doesn't sit down near the road. There's a house in between. It's a fairly long private driveway. Mm -hmm. And there's a row of um, arborvitae on the front property, and then there's also a row what appears to be, mm -hmm. um, I call them fuchsia bushes, on this property, but in, just in front. Is it pretty far off from the adjacent neighbor's boundary lines? Um, there is one corner of the addition that is too close by the setback rules, mm -hmm. um, but the rest of the house is uh, set well back away from property lines. Okay. Do you know what the measurement is on the bad corner? Fifteen. Thirteen feet. Okay. And what's it supposed to be in that district? Right. I'm sorry? Okay. I believe forty feet is required from what I see. Mm. Ten or fifteen. Can't be less than ten. For variance. What did you say it was, Brian? It's, um, it was measured at 13 feet now. With no, I, I, that, that I get, the, the district. Oh, uh, rural residential. What's the setback? 20 feet from the side yard. Oh, okay. Yeah. So they're good. Yeah. From our estimate, this addition was put on about, had to have been about 10 years ago now, at least, not a little longer. Okay. That's all my questions. Does anybody else on the board have questions? I, have, I guess I, in other words, they want us to okay with something that's already been built that they did without a permit. And then the people who want to buy the house want to build onto that space that was built well, without a permit. It. They want to finish it, so no, I kind of feel like we have two things going on here. What you've got most of it. They built it without a permit, then they got foreclosed on, and now the bank is trying to sell the house, but right. the new people can't complete the deal right? because their lawyer is saying you can't buy this house when it's got an addition without a permit. So I understand that, them. but oh. they, but the new people want this so they can build onto it once they get close on the property, which means I that... I think they just want to side it and put right. a roof on it. They're not going to increase the footprint at all. They're just going to finish the work that's oh, already okay. been done. I'm just so. trying to get it clarified. <laughs> yeah. No, that's a good question. 
So they won't be building any closer, I think. Well. No, no, okay. not without coming to the town first. <laughs> Rightfully. Okay. Um, does anybody else have any questions? No. Mm -hmm. uh, I'm just going to note for the record, since the people at home can't see this, that there's nobody here, and that's why I'm not asking for public comment. <laughs> um, it's appropriate, therefore, to go straight, if everybody agrees, to a motion to approve application 2016-33 with the conditions that the construction be finished within one year and a waiver on the side setback of 13 feet. So, um, And just as a matter of discussion, I'm not sure that that waiver was in the application, but we can do it, can't we? The, the waiver was in the application. It was, mm -hmm. okay. I, I'm sorry, I just missed it. No problem. Um, anyhow. So we'll end our discussion unless anybody has anything else to say to follow up my brilliant point. And uh, all those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, thank you. Have a nice thank night. Thank you very much. Susan, uh, we're an on the record town and because nobody has offered any testimony counter to this, effectively there is no appeal period. Okay. Oh, great. Wonderful. So be ready That'll to make them happy. Wonderful. Thank you. Uh, our final item is sketch plan and review for Delta Industries. Is is Mr. Johnson coming back for that, or? Uh, Robin isn't involved with that. Oh, okay. Um, do you know if somebody's coming, Gordon, or? Uh, Jim Spencer represents him at this point, but he hasn't contacted me. Do you have contact information for him? I do not. My view on these things is that people should get one continuance, no more, no less. The shame on me, fool me twice rule. Um, we have a phone call, oh, business phone. That's all right. I, I think given that they're not really hearings, but just sketch plan, you don't even need to continue them because they're not, they're, they're not a warrant matter. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. I forgot about that. So I think we can just set it aside. So they, they have to reapply or something to, for us to look at a sketch again? They just have to make a request. Oh, okay. So, I mean, I know things happen to people, and I don't think that at least once we should. I, I, even though even though we're doing this, I'm just going to maybe move to table it. I, I think we should take some action rather than just adjourn the meeting without doing anything. Mm -hmm. So my suggestion would be since we, we're not in the Warren situation, we just moved to table application 2016-42 and 2016-43. Um, and then I think if, they're, if they miss another one, we should reevaluate. Do you have to do a table it for a date, sir? Since we don't have a warning requirement, my, yeah. I, I don't think we really do. We could, we certainly could. Uh, I just want there to be something in the minutes so that when they look up what happened in this meeting, if there's any question as to whether we found uh, yeah. at least some kind of procedure, they'll be satisfied. So let's just say tabled until our next meeting. Excuse me. Okay. So moved. And let's also say that if they don't, why don't you contact them, Brian, and make sure that they want to be here. Sure. Um, and if they indicate that they don't, then we'll just not put it on the agenda until we hear from them. Yes. So that's my, my suggestion for a motion, to table it with, uh, with that other stuff. Yeah. Unless otherwise notified. Yeah. Okay. So someone say so moved. So moved. <laughs> okay. Second. Okay. Any Thanks. discussion? All right. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Okay, um, just before we do our adjournment, any progress with our training, Brian? Uh, no, I'm just, yep, I'll, I'll look okay. into it. I'm just finishing up the project, so I haven't had the opportunity. Okay, anything else anybody wants to bring up? Geez, I think we beat our record from the last meeting. <laughs>